It is 3.30 p.m. in New Delhi. It's 1 p.m. in Damascus. I'm Monita Rajpal. This is World One, live from London. India is putting its nuclear-armed neighbors, China and Pakistan, on notice with a display of military technology. The government says a new long-range missile mm. made a successful Brand. first flight Brand. early on Brand. Thursday. It can mm. carry a nuclear warhead and is said to have a range of 5,000 kilometers, putting major Chinese cities within striking distance. Indian's Harmeet Singh in New Delhi he joins us now live. Harmeet, why now? Why is India doing this now? India's economic might is growing. In fact, uh, India is one of the world's few growth markets In now. In terms of the impl or influence or impact, I should say, that it would have on geopolitical relationships, for example, China and Pakistan are close technological allies. They share technology. So what kind of implication would this have geopolitically? Well, as far as geopolitical implications are concerned, they'll become known only once this missile is inducted into India's strategic there, forces. Uh, and joining us from New Delhi. Well, one week since a truce was declared in Syria, the UN Secretary General says the government is failing to comply with Kofi Annan's peace plan. While the Syrian opposition says the army has started firing on homes again, there may be a chance for progress. Ban called for 300 unarmed UN observers to go in. The Syrian government says it welcomes the International Observer Mission. But on Wednesday, monitors visited Arbin, a suburb of Damascus, only to get caught up in the crossfire. That's from 14 countries, including U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, will meet in Paris later to discuss the situation in Syria. CNN's Ivan Watson is following developments from Istanbul in Turkey. He joins us now live with more on that. And Ivan, I guess a lot of people will be wondering, what options could they be discussing? Well, uh, you know, the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has, has offered a pretty detailed list of recommendations and observations. In Istanbul, thank you so much. We want to see what newspapers around the world are saying about this. There's an opinion piece in India's Hindustan Times headlined Endgame in Damascus, and it goes on to say it needs time and determination for any political process to succeed in Syria. However, any delay will help the opposition and external forces to accuse the regime of non-compliance and find excuses to topple it. President Bashar al-Assad must be allowed to implement the economic and political reforms that can save Syria and the Syrians from disaster. In the UAE, Gulf News has this headline that reads, uh, Syria deserves better than Kofi Annan. It's a common piece that says the targeted April 10th ceasefire evaporated even before the day was out. Sadly, world leaders patted each other's backs for their latest accomplishment. Though it was pure fantasy, Annan's plan helped the regime prolong the agony of the Syrian people and was inherently lopsided against the long-term interests of a nation that wanted to liberate itself from the Ba'ath strangulation. And there is this opinion piece in the Turkish newspaper Today Zaman with the headline Turkey, Syria and the Annan Plan. And it says it is becoming clear that the Annan Plan is interpreted in different ways. The Syrian regime and its supporters take the Annan Plan to be a way of keeping the Damascus regime intact while supposedly starting a political negotiation with the opposition. But the Annan Plan, as supported by the UN Security Council, is not designed to give more time to the regime. You're watching World One, live from London. Seven men are appearing in a South African court today, charged in connection with the gang rape of a 17-year-old girl who is thought to be mentally ill. The shocking attack was filmed on a mobile phone and went viral after it was passed around by school children in Soweto, a township south of Johannesburg. Police have told CNN they've identified the men in the video, and they are between the ages of 14 and 20. Eight arrests have been made. CNN's Ankapile Mabuse is in our bureau in Johannesburg, and she joins us now live. So what happens now, Ankapile? You know what, uh, Monita, interestingly enough, when these seven men arrived at court today, some Ankepile, of them were... thank you so much. Ankapile Mabuse there in Johannesburg. A racism scandal is brewing in Sweden involving the country's culture minister and a controversial cake in the shape of an African woman. The minister was filmed laughing and joking as she cut into the cake, which was intended as an artwork to highlight the issue of female genital mutilation. The incident has prompted calls for the minister to resign. We must warn you, some of you may find the pictures uh, in Nema Albaguer's report disturbing. These are the pictures igniting the race row threatening to engulf Sweden's culture minister. 
Secrets, sex, and scandal. It is the stuff Hollywood careers are built on, but it's not doing careers at the U.S. Secret Service any favors. Three of its members have been pushed out over an alleged prostitution scandal and shaken the Secret Service and prompted calls for a thorough investigation. Brianna Keeler is in Washington. She joins us now live with more on that. Brianna, this, this sounds to me like a, a public relations nightmare. Oh, certainly for the Secret Service. They're supposed to stand next to President Obama. and. Meanwhile, U.S. and NATO troops are slowly transferring combat operations to Afghan troops. Many civilians in Afghanistan are looking forward to the end of the American presence in the country. But in one village, they are dreading it. Nick Peyton Walsh reports from Afghanistan's Patika province to explain why. We're heading into what was once a key sanctuary for the sophisticated insurgents of the Haqqani network. Joins They're us now live, and Nick, you're saying that it is a bit of a gamble there, but I guess the question is, how long could this relationship and peace last where you are? In November of last year, Muammar Gaddafi's second son, Saif al-Islam, was captured while trying to flee the country. Now, the International Criminal Court wants to try the 39-year-old for crimes against humanity. But Libya's new leaders insist on trying him at home. Meanwhile, Gaddafi remains in the custody of the militia that caught him. World One's Zane Verge joins us now live from Tripoli with more on that. Zane. Hi, Monita. One of the big questions really is where should Saif al Islam al Gaddafi be? Tried? Zane, thank you. Zane Virgi there in Tripoli. You are watching World One. Much more still to come. Stay with us. They've been hailed as the greatest football team on the planet, but Barcelona hit an English roadblock in their quest for Champions League glory. Alex Thomas is here to tell us more about that. Ay, ay, ay. Yes, Monita. <laughs> Barcelona coach Pep Guardiola says. Short of later. Thank you so much. You are watching World One live from London, tweeting their way to the top. Social media is changing the face of French politics. Welcome back. A beautiful young singer urging a 60-year-old politician to take power over me. That's what it says. It may sound like an election scandal, but it's actually part of an election strategy and a sign of just how much the Internet is spicing up the French presidential race. Jim Bitterman reports. Mexico's uh, second largest volcano is showing some signs of increased activity. Let's uh, get more on that from meteorologist Mario Ramo at the World Weather Center. Mari. Uh, yeah, Monita, this is a, a, a very large volcano. We're talking about the Popo. Right, Mari, thank you very sure. much for that. I'm going to switch gears a little bit and uh, bring you this story about a real life version of an elevator in the film Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Remember that film? Well, workers at a building in London step into a lift, and this is what they see lickable flavored cake stickers pasted all over the elevator we're just waiting for that image there um now the creator of this idea says it brings a little fun uh to stressed out office workers all right well let's take a look at uh, what's trending on social media right now at number three artists in australia have bottled the smell that any die-hard apple fan would recognize a brand new macbook fresh out of the box they had to get expert fragrance makers to uh, replicate smells, including plastic, rubber, and glue. You can smell it for yourself if you can make it to their gallery in Melbourne. At number two, Twitter is abuzz with news of reality TV starlet Kim Kardashian and her political aspirations. On a recent episode of her show, she mentioned that she wants to be mayor of Glendale. It's a suburb of Los Angeles, and she says it's a long-term goal. The next elections aren't until 2017, so she's got about five years. Now, at number one, the death of uh, American TV host and producer Nick, Dick Clark. Uh, he has brought an emotional response on the web. Uh, celebrities and fans are tweeting many of their uh, favorite memories from Clark's 50-year career. Singer Tony Bennett sent this message out. Dick Clark was a great guy and one of the first people to play my records. He will be missed. I remember his um, New Year's Eve countdown parties. You are watching World One live from London. I'm Monita Rajpal. Thanks for joining us. We'll update you the news headlines at the top of the hour right here on CNN.